like to close by reading a very brief excerpt from the report of the Air Force's Scientific Advisory Board, which they made recently upon completing a detailed review of the subject of UFO. This is a statement. The committee concluded that in the 19 years since the first UFO was sighted, there has been no evidence that unidentified flying objects are a threat to our national security. Cases that remain unidentified and that some people would say is an argument for there being an extraterrestrial explanation are very rare. So what it basically came down to was asking Davis Moffins, public affairs officer, look, I know your last plane down was down no later than 6 p.m., but maybe was there anybody visiting? Was there another unit there, TDY, temporary duty, maybe another state, something? And his answer was, oh yeah, Snowbird. It's just a, a potential answer. We're not saying this is the answer. We're just saying this is yet another piece of the puzzle that could explain this one. And I can't give a definitive explanation. I can just tell you that our, our planes were out there, and this is a possibility. People could have mistaken these flares for some kind of unidentified object. Most cases we get, we get are misidentifications, the occasional hoax, you know, uh, airplanes, planets, you name it. And. There is a small percentage that at the end of the day, no matter how hard you try, and I, I can be as skeptical as anyone, and I, I am, there still remains cases that are unidentified. No, it's going backwards. Three, Three two, two, engine one, sequence start. Zero. One, zero, launch commit. We have a liftoff. There were some other UFO researchers that wanted answers with regards to the reality of the UAPs for them to at least come forward to state they're real because a lot of us researchers are pooling all of our resources together and wanting disclosure. We want people to know the truth. Well, eventually it was uh, through Senator Harry Reid. Uh, he was made aware of these videos coming from the Navy, the United States Navy. Some of these videos were leaked to him and he became aware of, we, we need to know what's going on here because it could have been a national threat, a threat to the, the defense of the United States. So he pushed for that to go through the Senate and he asked questions in the Senate that we need answers to this and they want to speak to the pilots who left the USS Nimitz and the USS Theodore Roosevelt, which was two of the main aircraft carriers and dispatched those aircraft to go towards these unidentified flying objects. They had what was called, in the last months of Trump's presidency, the COVID relief bill. You think, well, what do UFOs have to do with COVID? Nothing. But it was the kind of bill you could add things on. And the, the UAP study was one of those things that was added to it. It was going to go through Congress anyway. And hey presto, out came the preliminary report. 
as geologists, we were waiting for this long-awaited report coming from the Pentagon, which is allegedly going to blow the lid on the UFO phenomena and give us more answers to what we've been looking at. So I was really surprised when it came out. It was only about nine pages or so when it officially came out. What's interesting is the onslaught of this release of a document with regards to the UAPs. How many pages was it? Nine pages? And did the world react to it? No. It's alarming. Clearly, within the lines of that report, they were saying that there were objects that defied explanation. Is it our own technology? Is it the Chinese? Is it the Russians? Because at the end of the day, come what may, they've got to look at this in an objective manner. We found out that there had been a secret study called ATIP, A-A-T-I-P, Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program, that as part of its work looked into UFOs. Nobody knew that that existed up until 2017 when it was released in the New York Times. Governments have secrets. It's part and parcel of, of governments is to keep secrets. If there was an admittance by the establishments that UFOs and aliens were real, it would cast doubt upon their authenticity because they have concealed this subject for decades. You know, looking for life out there is brilliant, but then will the establishments tell us the truth? No. And we're finding that over and over again. So no matter what is found, what is discovered, what is brought to the table, if it's a threat to, you know, society, or, you know, it's something the military establishments, most notably the military establishments, want to keep secret, you can bet your bottom dollar they'll bury it. They'll patent it and push it away. You imagine being in their position, they've managed to keep a tight lid on it for 70 years. And so they've become absolute masters at covering things up and putting out alternative theories so that the public are sort of dissuaded from believing what's really happening. Things need to change. I think it's time to stand up and say we're fed up being lied to. Someone in the military is sick and tired of the lies and the disinformation that they keep bringing forward and, you know, fobbing off to the general public. Someone wanted this out. And I'm glad that they did, because they were the only ones that could do this. It was like the likes of me or, you know, someone else coming forward with, oh, look at this film footage of this UFO. They wouldn't buy it. They wouldn't have it. It had to come from a official source. Well, mainly they focused on a criteria, um, a couple of hundred or so sightings that was particularly unusual. Think about it, that's a lot. Out of that, only one they could identify. It's OK looking at a still picture of something from a distance, but you're not getting the perspective of how big it is, how it's moving, or anything else. When you look at the one they identified that was a Batman balloon, as it was zoomed in, it was quite obvious. They did say if they looked into some of the others, they might also fall into similar categories, you know, balloons, astronomical objects. What it does show is that, A, they're looking at them properly, they're not just taking them at face value. And it also shows that even though you are a member of the US military, you can be fooled. If you're a pilot and you report X, we have to believe you simply because you're a pilot. All pilots are like you and I, they're human. They have their own belief systems and they can make mistakes. 
straight away you could tell it was nothing of the sort and it was a bit misleading that they actually released that as being a UFO when it so obviously wasn't. And all of the cases uh, come from military sources. So there's no reports from members of the public. We're really getting into the nitty gritty now. They're talking about high standing academic people. With the ordinary man in the street who's also seen these things, let us not forget, then we're dealing with true stories as well. Just because it's Air Force pilots and we're Joe, Joe Bloggs in the street, it's still the same phenomena. Irrespective of it's a pilot or Mrs. Smith, they're seeing the same exact objects. The, the UOP task force looked at 144 cases going back to 2004. One of the reasons going back to 2004 is that, and it was said by one of the pilots, they actually upgraded the radar facilities that they had. And it was since then that they've now been able to to track these things, so maybe we just didn't have the technology. If they'd have used data prior to 2004, it might have opened another can of worms for them. One that perhaps they didn't have a control over. The reason for 2004 is because of the Nimitz sightings and then the, 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 the films that were taken. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the SA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The whole thing, dude. The only thing about the footage, it's not very good quality. I do know that the quality could be better, and they probably got better. So the question does arise, why did they release such a grainy, awful image? We know that the three videos that came to light that were connected with the Navy are original. Maybe someone within the high establishments wanted this to get out. Whether it was leaked and then they had to disclose because it was leaked uh, is, is a bit of a grey area. One called the FLIR, forward-looking infrared. It's like a small tic-tac, but obviously larger in dimensions when it was pursued by the military jets. That was seen at very low altitude to begin with, over the water. This was a, a naval uh, exercise off the, off the California coast. So you'd got half the fleet there. There was four fighters, one was the US, the other was the enemy. And they were playing war games. and they lock onto it and they've got it locked on then all of a sudden it just goes boom and it's gone. After seeing this thing, the, the fighters rendezvous 60 miles away at a certain point. Only the pilots knew where that rendezvous point was. So none of those on the, the aircraft carriers who were following all this on radar knew where they were going. But of course, when they got there, what was waiting for them? The Tic Tac. So they were wanting to know, why has this been filmed? Why are they going at terrific speeds? Far outweighs the, the, the normal capabilities of American military aircraft. It was said to be traveling at 46,000 miles an hour, which is about 10 times the speed of sound. Now, the G-force on that was such that if that was a, a normal aircraft with a normal pilot, he would, he would be dead. How did it know? than they would be at that point. And there's another one called the gimbal, and they locked on it, uh, and you hear the pilots as well communicating with each other and saying, geez, look at that thing, there's, there's a, a whole fleet of them. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the SA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The whole thing, dude. The object they saw, they didn't see it. It was on radar. And if you look at the footage and the data on the footage, you can see at the top 
of the screen it says IR, which is it's in the infrared. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. But if there's like Ooh. anything, it's rotating. But it was flying erratically. There was no visual exhaust plumes. There was no visual wings or aerofoils, you know, that you would expect to see on a, an aircraft. Contradict myself here. There we go. We've been saying that for years, years and years. You have finally, finally captured something on videotape that has been people have been seeing for hundreds of years. That's a good side. But the bad side is just sniggling away at the back of me is the wonderment is could it be our own technology? And they're happy. The American military machine are happy for it to be masquerading as a fanciful UFO because it takes it away what it truly is. When I was serving in the Air Force, the first time I saw a stealth bomber was in the Gulf War. And it had been out for years. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you would look again and think it was not normal. If it's our own technology, then why are they keeping it so secret? Surely they'd want to showcase it to Korea, Chinese and the Russians. Hey, look what we've got. Look what we've got. They've said, well, it could be the Russians or China. We don't think it is, but it might be. So is that, uh, you know, sort of backdoor way of saying we need more money for uh, the defence budget just in case? These things are, you know, our foreign adversaries. Have they devised some fantastic craft that can exceed, you know, the, the capabilities of modern aircraft? And if so, we have to be very concerned with that. So obviously we have to look over the fence to the possibilities that it's another country. That said, I, I, I still believe we're dealing with something extraterrestrial or interdimensional. When you look at what they spent at the Department of Defence, I think it was 22 million. Compared to the overall defence budget, which goes into the trillions, it, it's, it's, it's a trifle. It, you know, might sound a lot of money to us, but it, it is nothing. Now we're on a roll, so to speak, that maybe the powers that be will say, OK, we need to find out a wee bit more about this. Here's the money. Because when you look at the money, it goes into the black budget programme of American military machine. Millions of dollars going to the funding of these new aircraft and stuff like that. Let's have a wee chunk of that and look properly at the UFO enigma because it's now crying out for this demand for answers. There's no definitive conclusion. They've said that some of them could be like misidentifications, things that we all know about. One is balloons, you know, atmospherics, a whole host of things that, you know, we are seen in the sky. And then they've got the, the last one is other. They have a category in that report called other. And that can be anything. But what you will not find anywhere mentioned in the report is the word aliens or extraterrestrial. That, those words are not in it anywhere. But you could say that they're in the other category. And it was more geared in line with how we can safeguard our pilots and, and the crew of, you know, in being in danger in these situations. They kept using the weather balloon hypothesis. We've still not got away from that since the inception of Roswell. The way they came to that conclusion is because the Americans believe that they have the most advanced military technology. And this was beyond them beyond their capabilities, and I think it frightened the living daylights out of them. There must be more footage out there of objects doing similar characteristics as the Tic Tac videos. This footage is somewhere within the confines of the vaults, somewhere in the Pentagon. 
We know that from the 1940s, many aircraft in the American Air Force was followed by what's known as the Foo Fighters, as were the Germans, the German Air Force. And each country thought it was a secret device of, of the other. And it wasn't until after the war, when records were displayed, that um, nobody knew what these Foo Fighters were. And it was just a ball of fire appearing on the wingtips. We'll go back to ATIP. Nobody had a clue, nobody because it was small, it was, it was somewhere within the Department of Defence, didn't have a huge staff. It's like the old story, I'm going to tell you this, but don't tell anybody. I'm only telling you because you, you're my best mate. So I tell you the story, and then you go and tell your next best mate, and he'll go and tell us, and eventually it comes out. You know, that, that's just the way human nature is. But nobody had a clue, nothing. So we have to remember that when they want to, the government can keep secrets, they really can. It's given rise to suspicion, well, are they other? Have we got an ATIP version? Well, the Ministry of Defence, if you ask them, are bound to say no, because it's secret, you know? So there is no point in asking in the first place. It, it's unlikely, but you can't rule it out. It was only going a small number of years. I think they spent 20-some million dollars, or pounds, and it's claimed that Luis Elizondo was the head of it. Uh, and he, he had become dissatisfied that they weren't making enough progress. In other words, I think there was, there was obstacles put in, not just in the way, but purposely put in the way. He felt that the phenomena was worthy of, of study because of what they, the information that they had gathered. So he resigned and it was only because he resigned that he eventually went public with the support of, you know, various politicians and UFO researchers as well. And, um, and, and the rest has followed. When someone comes to you who's in charge of a multi-million dollar weapon platform, who maintains a top secret security clearance, who is paid and trusted by this country to go fight wars and, and to fly over cities with, with live munitions, um, and by the way, they're trained observers with millions of dollars invested in their training. Yep. I would submit to you it's pretty compelling, but on top of that, it's not just the eyewitness testimony. It is, it is actual electro-optical data and radar return. Elizondo will tell you, he said, there's a lot more to come because I saw it. It should have been a real in-depth report with it being such an important subject. I believe there's a classified version of this. We were speaking with some of my colleagues the other day about that. I think it's about 96, 97 pages long. And it really, it really goes into the nitty gritty of what they truly believe is behind these wonderful footage. I would like to think that that report will also come out. But if it does, will it be doctored? Will it be heavily censored? I mean, the, uh, the American government have now agreed and lifted the secrecy on the, the Tic Tac UFOs. And so therefore, I would like to think that maybe this ongoing report will come out and show us more, a lot more. The government is multifaceted. There are times when one department doesn't know what the other department's doing. It's on a need to know basis. You don't need to know what the elephant's got ears. You're working on the trunk, you know? It's as simple as that. And that could be another reason why they've tailored the UAP task force. Now, you don't need to know. It comes through us, and you lot out there, you don't need to know. We need to know, you don't. If they did come forward and say, yes, it's real, because of all the people who have come forward to state they've had these experiences and were laughed at by the media cartel, you know, how is that all going to fare? It's going to go tops up. Everything's going to tip up. Uh, you know, and the way I see it is that uh, damn them, damn them for what they've done because it, it's the truth that we know is the truth. They're telling you that it doesn't exist and they are there they are above you. Uh, technology that we don't have here. Trust me when I tell you that when you're in their presence, that changes everything. People will tell you what they think you saw. They didn't see what you saw. So for those establishments of power who continually deny the reality, then I'm afraid, you know, they need to be open about this because we want to know the truth.
it was able to move sideways, right and left, and tilt over backwards. Oh! It had to be a, something, of an alien spacecraft of some sort, because it was going so damn fast. I'd love to know what the hell it was, but I'm sure that we're going to discover aliens eventually. Well, everybody would like UFOs to be beings from another world. I mean, it's the most romantic theory, but let's just stay there and say, we have to remember it is a theory or a hypothesis. It's called the ETH, Extraterrestrial Hypotheses. And there are many, you know, theories of what UFOs may or may not be. Like here in the United Kingdom, this is a phenomena that's touched every continent in this planet. Are we dealing with phenomena, plural, rather than phenomenon, singular? Could it be multiple things rather than any one thing? Uh, so, I, me personally, I wouldn't rule any of them out, uh, you know, and that includes extraterrestrials. If you had a top 10 list of theories, you'd have to put it in there somewhere. Saw those white flashes again in the sky. And uh, thought I'd come out here and just kind of look around a little bit. 360, there's the sand dunes, that's the north. There's the sound, of course. Just walking along here towards the west. Thought I'd. Uh, Oh, jeez, goodness gracious. Over those dunes right there. Over the dunes. Oh, my God. There she is. There she is right there. Oh, my God. I just hope that they tell us, you know, yes, they are real, and they, they bring us that hard evidence to prove that we are not going mad. <laughs> You know, that we are, that we have seen UFOs, that we have seen them at close range, they are real, but what they are, we don't know. And it's interesting, isn't it, how they've changed the acronym from UFO, an identified flying object, to unidentified aerial phenomena. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, so it feels like they've upgraded from the typical 1950s flying saucer, woo 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 type thing coming from another planet to aerial phenomena, which to me that's kind of spooky because it's almost an admission as though we're going into dimensions or the theory of interdimensional reality. Within the field of ufology, UAP is a much more accurate term. But I can tell you now, if you went to your local shopping mall, your local shopping centre and stopped the first hundred people that went past you and said, what's a UFO? And 99 out of 100 will say an unidentified flying object, a spacecraft, or words to that effect. If you said, what's a UAP? What? Now, ridicule has been a very unfortunate factor in this thing. I know, but it's what it boils down to, that anybody who reports one now, they'll say, you, you're crazy. Look what the Conan report said. Now, if we let the Conan report go unchallenged, uh, we would be guilty of letting these people be victimized. And there are many people who have been badly hurt by official ridicule after sighting. The airline pilots today, most of them will not report a sighting publicly. And, I, and many pilots have told me that I wouldn't report one to the Air Force and the thing flew right in the cockpit. One thing that I noticed in the Pentagon's report, there was one chapter which was also in a different color. And it was trying to do away with the stigma that's attached to the subject and encourage the various military people to come forward. In the old days, if they had reported something or tracked it on radar while in flight, they were ordered not to speak about it. They were told that they had to sign a form to say that that is top secret, and otherwise they'd lose their jobs. I think now that this admittance by the Navy has certainly you know, brought a lot of people out and it's given us hope um, in, the, in the fact that if these guys are saying they're real, then obviously we're dealing with something that is an unusual phenomena. You may have noticed a lady pilot called Alex Dietrich. 
she was one of those involved in the Tic Tac sightings. She was a Top Gun fighter pilot. She has no interest in the subject, but she came out of the woodwork and on the record simply to show, look, if you report these sightings, forget the conspiracy theories. You're not going to lose your pension. You're not going to get fired, you know. And she was openly encouraged, encouraging others to do exactly the same as she had. So I think that's a very positive move, I really do. We are here today to disclose the truth about a subject that has been ridiculed and questioned, denied for at least 50 years. The men and women who are on this stage and the some 350 additional military intelligence witnesses to the so-called UFO matter and extraterrestrial intelligence can prove and will prove that we are not alone. Well, what we have to bear in mind is that uh, many of these naval personnel, military personnel, Air Force personnel have signed the Official Secrets Act. And back in 2001 at the American Press Club, all these generals are lined up, medals, braids, and all the rest. And I went, here we go, at last. These are, just, these are not men in the street. These are military men who's had their own UFO sightings. Sightings of strange craft above silos, switching off the silos, etc. missiles, the Minuteman missile. A lot of these guys are there to tell the media and the press and they told their stories and what they saw. And then it was yesterday's news. And I was so disappointed at that. So when the Pentagon report came out, I says, oh, I, was, I was fearful, are we going to get the real deal here? But it came out and they did say something that I was not expecting. We can't identify these objects. What they have confirmed, like our own Ministry of Defence have been saying for years, yes, we know there are things in the sky that we can't identify, but unless there are threats, we're not interested. The US Department of Defence have gone one further and said, yeah, we just don't know what they are yet. Targets up here. We just had something go right over the top of us. Commercial airlines certainly have a role to play because earlier this year there was a commercial flight, the voice cockpit recordings being released. Part of New Mexico they were flying. I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top of us. You can hear the surprise in his voice. He's not frightened or anything like that, but you can hear the excitement and surprise in his voice. So they certainly have a role to play. Maybe that's something they might bring in further down the road. Again, we'll have to wait and see, but it wouldn't surprise me, let's put it that way. We do know that when the Soviets, the Russians did a study, they included civilian pilots. Governments do take it seriously, but it's to what degree? And, and what they are looking for when it comes to the UFO subject. For example, when you look at our own Ministry of Defence, they've been involved with it since the 1950s. And they've consistently said that they only looked at UFOs from a defence point of view, i.e. what any of these sightings, incursions by our enemies. In other words, the Soviets that it used to be, or the Russians. Once they could discount that, then that was it. They didn't look any further. So yes, they took it serious, but for different reasons. Uh, the, the French have taken it very seriously, and part of their, their, their space program looks at UFO sightings. So it depends from, you know, from country to country. The United States has, has, has had a, a, um, a strange relationship with the subject. It's pretended to look at it seriously, but at the end of the day, it never really fulfilled the remit. It was like on your school report, could have done better. The fact of the matter remains that they've now put themselves on a pedestal where they have come forward with these sightings. There's a lot of stuff in 2004 that demanded scrutiny as well. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem 
has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. In pursuit of this obligation since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports that have come to us from all kinds of sources. Of this great mass of reports, we have been able adequately to explain the great bulk of them, explain them to our own satisfaction. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, as meteorological or electronic phenomena, or as light aberration. However, there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. Major Keyhole, what is your opinion of these new sightings of unidentified objects? With all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. During a three-year investigation, I found that many pilots have described objects of substance and high speed. One case, pilots reported their plane was buffeted by an object which passed them at 500 miles an hour. Obviously, this was a solid object, and I believe it was from outer space. What people were seeing back in the 40s, the 50s, 60s, and current day is this more or less the same phenomenon. Our basic difficulty in dealing with these is that there is no measurement of them that makes it possible for us to put them in any pattern that would be profitable for a deliberate, uh, custom sort of analysis to take the next step. We have, as of date, come to only one firm conclusion with respect to this remaining percentage. And that is that it does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency that we can relate with any, to any conceivable threat to the United States. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. Officially, you know, it's probably started in the 1950s. They did a thing called Project Sign. That merged into Project Grudge, you know, and, and eventually we ended up with Project Blue Book, which, which finished in 1969, closed officially in 1970. So, you know, they've had involvement for, for, for decades. That's official involvement. But what about unofficial? where there's no central reporting area, but, you know, and then, of course, we, we learn later on in the 2000s, we have ATIP. Was there anything in between? We haven't found that out yet, possibly. Well, the aims of Project Sign initially was to find out what validity were they in regards to people claiming to see UFOs. So they had to find out exactly what was traversing the American skies, because was it a threat? The mainstay of that particular report was indeed the alleged crash at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. Today's edition presents a roundup of the latest developments in the finding of a flying disc. Suddenly it was like UFOs are real, and then the next day's newspaper, no it wasn't, it was a balloon. So quickly that story was suppressed, as it usually is. A few moments ago I talked to officials at Wright Field, and they declared that they expect the so-called flying copper to be delivered there, but that it hasn't arrived as yet. In the meantime, General Ramey described the object as being of flimsy construction, almost like a box type. He says that it was so battered that he was unable to determine whether it had a disc form, and he does not indicate its size. Ramey says that so far as can be determined, no one saw the object in the air, and he describes it as being made of some sort of tinfoil. Some major UFO cases are poo-pooed, watered down, etc. In their findings, they concluded there were no verifiable evidence to suggest there was any threat to the defence of the United States. Project Grudge itself, there's a name, isn't it? I mean, they did not believe it. Back in the 40s, the American military machine was not even wanting to waste their time with these subjects. They'd rather do other stuff, you know, but they, they were commissioned to do this by the, the people, so they had to come up with some answer. Here in 2021 and going forward, 
there's enough evidence to suggest that we really, truly should be looking at these sightings in the sky. And again, getting back to this Pentagon report, what a wonderful disclosure that was to really put their hands up and say, we don't know what this is. Massive difference from the 1940s when they just wanted to put it away in the shadows. The United States Air Force, in discharging its responsibility for the aerospace defense of the nation, is called upon to investigate reports of unidentified flying objects. Two Air Force officers have over the years been very closely associated with this activity. Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Taggart was formerly the chief spokesman for the Air Force on the matter. And Major Hector Quintanella is now the chief of Project Rupert. Major Quintanella, what are the objectives of Project Rupert? The objectives of the program are two forms. They're the same as they have been since 1953 when the regulation was fixed. First of all, to try to determine if the UFO phenomena presents a threat to the security of the United States. And second, to determine if the UFO phenomena exhibits any technological advances which could be channeled to research and development. The only other small staff in an office, its scientific director was the man who invented the phrase close encounters. Dr. J. Allen Hynek. He became disillusioned because the military were keeping the real cases for themselves and giving him a load of the rubbish cases and telling him to say this and to say that. So he then created his own department of investigations after that. But slowly but surely, Hynek came around and said, you know, this is not right. Some of these things I, I can't explain. Whilst the Air Force and that gathered these reports, he was a scientist, he had to look seriously at it. His initial thoughts were it was swamp gas, which <laughs> made a lot of people laugh at the time, you know. And then, thankfully, G. Allen Hynek saw quite easily that these reports, once he seriously looked at these reports, he saw, wait a minute, there is something going on here. There truly, truly, truly is something going on here. The Air Force has been accused from time to time of hiding information about UFO. What do you have to say to that kind of thing? Those charges are absolutely untrue. Actually, the United States Air Force releases statistics on the UFO phenomena through the Department of Defense press desk periodically. And we've always honored accredited media when they want to investigate a given specific sighting. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide at all. Is there anything in the files, either classified or unclassified, that would indicate that there may be extraterrestrial visitors over there? First of all, the project is completely unclassified. And there is nothing in the records which would indicate that we have been visited by any advanced civilization. There was an incident in the early 1960s at Socorro, New Mexico. It involved police officer Lonnie Zamora. And he was chasing a speeding car. And he noticed down in the canyon there was, there was something else, so he let the speeding car go. There was this white object down in the canyon. So he, he took off where he could get a, a better view of it. And it was like a, an ovalish, roundish object on legs with a strange red insignia on the front. And lo and behold, there's two creatures, two men, standing next to it with some kind of white suit on. He got out of the police car, went to approach it, and all of a sudden there's this noise this thing takes off with flames shooting out from underneath it. He literally jumped down behind his car for protection and watched it disappear into the distance. He got on the radio for assistance. When his colleague got there, the bushes where this thing had been were still smoldering and it left three depressions in the ground and in inverted commas, footprints. So the FBI were brought in Heineck, as part of Project Blue Book, was brought in. All this was filmed and photographed, all the ground markings and so on. Lonnie Zamora was a you know, long-standing member of the, of the local police force. There was a couple of other witnesses who saw this thing you know, flying over, and that kind of changed Heineck's stance. How does the Air Force look upon people who uh, make reports of UFO? Do they look on them as qualified observers? Yes, they do look on them as qualified observers. Actually, most people who report a UFO sighting 
are patriotic citizens who have been mystified by something that they've seen. And through a patriotic sense, report it to the local law enforcement officials or to the United States Air Force Base near them. Well, how about the tracking and detection facilities of the Air Force itself, Pat? How does this work? Well, actually, uh, to begin with, the United States Air Force is charged by an act of Congress with the Air Defense of the United States. And the North American Air Defense Command and the Air Defense Command have space tracking facilities which are constantly on the alert 24 hours a day. We're interested in anything that flies in our atmosphere. Well, how about UFO reports in other countries? How are they handled? The UFOs actually occur worldwide. However, the United States is the only country in the world that uh, places as much emphasis on the phenomenon. Uh, other countries place a burden of proof on the observer and not on their effort. And that would make your job a lot easier if they did that here. Yes, it would. What are we dealing with here? Is this reality? Is it non-reality? And the conclusion of that uh, particular investigation was, again, nothing was warranted. No further investigation demands to look at these, this enigma. Project Blue Book was a front. It was, a, it was more of a public relations exercise rather than an official UFO study. It's always claimed that some of the other interesting sightings went elsewhere and Heineck never saw them and never, he never found out about them. But he found out enough that it changed his mind, let's put it that way. The most probable answer was observation by extraterrestrial uh, beings or controlled machines making observations of the Earth. Now this, this is exactly what the Air Force said in 1948. They've had a top secret estimate of the situation which said that these things were interplanetary devices. And they, they've denied it for years, but they finally it was admitted. I think they've learned from things like Project Blue Book, where if you have a free-for-all, you basically have too much data, and they don't have the people to go out and investigate it. Whereas if it's from a, a military source, it can pretty much be investigated at source at the time and it can be recorded on multiple formats, as well as the various cameras that they have, you know, the various types of radar and, and what else, whereas civilians can't do that. It should also mean that there's no hoaxes. Because if you're in the military and you submit a hoax, I think, that, you know, you're gonna spend a long time in whatever the American equivalent is to Siberia. I, I tell you, I've, I spent years on this thing just trying to get this top secret uh, estimate. That, that it, I beg pardon? <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel George Freeman, spokesman, Air Force Headquarters spokesman on UFOs, who wrote a lot of letters and uh, official letters explaining these things. Now, this was sent to the head of our subcommittee in London a capable investigator. But the point is, the letter stated that the information, this was first revealed by Ruppelt, who was the head of Project Blue Book for a while. Uh, the Air Force, for some reason, felt they should deny it, and it was denied by people on up to the rank of general. We could produce dozens of letters they sent to congressmen, senators, uh, denying there ever was such a thing. This is the thing about this subject. Trust is broken. Mm. And it's so hard to come by good trust in it. It has been given knock after knock after knock. So all respect, all reputation has been destroyed. And they have the gall now to release this paper to express mild interest when they knew all along they were real. They've lied and helped to create the propaganda in announcing that they are bogus, that they are not real. The trust, this has wiped away trust and integrity with the powers that be. So no wonder we can't trust them. Thank you, Colonel Packer, Major Pantanello. I would like to close by reading a very brief excerpt from the report of the Air Force's Scientific Advisory Board, which they made recently upon completing a detailed review of the subject of UFO. This is a statement. The committee concluded that in the 19 years since the first UFO was sighted, there has been no evidence that unidentified flying objects 
are a threat to our national security. Whilst they had a job to do, whilst they had to look as if they're doing a job and doing it properly, I still think that the criteria was that they were just not truly interested in what it was. Because it was all billed as alien, alien technology, they just veered away from it. Now we have total different ballparks, a total different ballpark. I thought it was nonsense, complete nonsense. It took, it took reading hundreds of reports and talking with hundreds of witnesses Many pounds and others, for I was convinced. Are they being controlled by men on Earth or by no. men on No. No, I'm not referring to the ones which ha have such high speeds and maneuvers at high speeds. They're completely beyond the uh, possibility of anything that we have now or are even planning. The speeds and the Air Force has, has put some of these on record. There was one case that they never have explained. Was that, where an object, a very large object, was seen, uh, was tracked by radar, and a number of small objects which were tracked 50, 240 miles an hour from a B-29. And people on board the B-29 saw the small objects. They merged with the big one, which then accelerated to over 9,000 and went off the scope. Or a remote control. By, by alien of whom we know nothing. I mean, I was a skeptic myself. Skepticism is fine, we do need the skeptics. A coin in your pocket has a head and a tail. It doesn't have two heads unless you're a magician. We do need the other side of the fence. Reports of strange flying objects in the sky are older than the United States. Some of them reported in scientific journals that date back to the 16th century, but They've usually been classed with Loch Ness monsters and relegated to the Sunday supplements, until World War II showed us that some of the most fantastic dreams can be very real, like atomic bombs, for instance. And since the close of the war, hundreds of reports of strange objects in the sky have been filed with the Air Force, and most of them have been easily explained. Uh, experimental jet aircraft, weather balloons, reflected ground lights, unusual cloud formations, and so on. But here is a picture that was released just today by the United States Coast Guard. It shows four luminous objects in formation in the sky over Salem, Massachusetts. And this picture was taken at 9.35 a.m. on July 16th by a Coast Guard photographer. We laughed at Marconi, that'll never work. We laughed at John Logie Baird and the invention of television, that'll never, oh yes, sorry, it's worked. We laughed at the Wright brothers, that plane will never fly, sorry, it's flown. We should never, never, never laugh and make fun and poke fun at things because they look and sound ridiculous. If you tried to give a computer to a caveman, he would have had no understanding of that or Christopher Columbus going into a not the Nautilus, a nuclear submarine, a seafaring man, he couldn't comprehend it. So we're learning all the time. Mankind is at the very bottom rung of an enormous ladder of understanding. We know so little about ourselves, about our place in the cosmos. I, as I said, I was a skeptic myself, but once the evidence is there, it's like a big sieve. There's all the, all the paranormal and UFOs, you get rid of all the rubbish. And you're left with kernels of truth. It will not go through that grill. And these are the, the aspects that I and my colleagues are trying to understand. Me personally, I'm just a very, very small cog and an enormous wheel of researchers, not only here in the UK, but all across Europe and the rest of the world. We're striving for answers because we know so little. What is it? Since the Department of Defense UFO study was revealed in the New York Times in December 2017, there's been a, a you know, a complete shift. Uh, ufology was looked upon as a silly season subject. As the home was vacant at the time of the raid, officers decided to post surveillance and wait for the occupants to return home. Within the past half hour, the occupant of the home returned and was taken into custody. Let me just say that I believe it a serious offense for anyone, human, space alien, or otherwise, to engage in mysterious activity in our nighttime skies. 
That is why I will personally ask that the perpetrator be prosecuted to the fullest for the havoc wrought on our entire community. And now I'll ask Officer Stein and his colleagues to escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. <laughs> Don't get him too close to me, please. It's, you know. <clears throat> now, this just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. I just reinforce the fact to the people watching that UFOs are real, no matter what they may be. They clearly are real. It's a substantial enigma that's been with us through countless millennia. God bless all those people who's come forward and told their stories. I have seen UFOs, and so I don't need persuading. I've seen these objects in the sky. Are you looking for little green men or what? No. <laughs> no, not little green men or women. But even the BBC Newsnight has covered the subject, which is unheard of. And they didn't laugh at it either. I watched it. I was amazed when it came on. Now, it's not often we get to discuss UFOs on this programme. Not often enough, you might say. But tonight, the Pentagon has given us the perfect excuse. A former defence official has told CNBC that when it comes to UFOs, the US has a massive intelligence failure on its hands. Next month, Congress is set to be briefed on UFOs when a long-awaited Pentagon report is released. In April last year, the US Department of Defense authorized the release of three historical US Navy videos depicting unidentified aerial phenomena. So there has been a complete transformation so long as the media is concerned, which we've always told them that the, the, the subject is interested enough without you making fun of it. The lid is now off the proverbial tin. We're now looking at a phenomena that is, yes, it's been with us through millennia, but it seems to be increasing. What the, the report and the, and the attendant press coverage has already done, and I've said it on a few interviews, I told you so. will be kept in the dark and we will be kept at arm's length until we learn to move forward. Mankind will never, never, never learn anything if we turn away. Science will never progress if we turn away. You may not believe a word of this, but by golly, have a look, because the evidence when you look at it is impressive. It's there all day long. Yes, there's a lot of falsehoods out there. Yes, there's a lot of hoaxes. But once you move that away, you're left looking at gems, fantastic UFO reports.